Let's turn now to the Indigenous voice to Parliament. And even though planning for the referendum is still in its very early stages, the Yes campaign is already launching an ad, hoping to inspire people to support the constitutional change. Take a look. I've got a story to tell you. It's a good one. It's about how these people, the first people, got a voice. 60,000 years they've been speaking. Had 363 languages. But no voice. No say on matters which affected them. It wasn't right. Roy R.C. is a Wiradjuri man and member of the Uluru Dialogue Leadership, helping to lead the Yes campaign. He joins us now from Canberra. Roy, great to see you. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Really, really powerful ad. Uh, are there any particular Australians the Yes campaign is trying to reach through it? Oh, look, we... We're reaching the uh, the grandmothers and the grandfathers that voted in 67 and probably, look, if your grandmother or grandfather was a part of that campaign, they voted to give my mother citizenship rights in this country. I'm a 67 baby, so uh, we're reaching out again to the everyday Australians, the people that are, uh, that may not necessarily be engaged, however, you know, we, uh, we, we've put forward an opportunity for a transformation of the nation. And that's what this ad campaign is about. You talk about the importance of engaging in, in a positive way. How important is that in your view? Oh, look, there's been a lot of negativity around. And I was only saying to someone this morning, you know, we live in a democracy, not a, a, a democracy. Everyone's entitled to their views and opinion. However, this process is about uh, healing the nation. It's about bringing people together, both black and white. And, um, if I look at my children, that when they go to primary school, they don't see black or white. They see another kid that they play with, that they come around and spend the weekends with and, and associate with. You know, it, it, it's not about black and white. This is about doing the right thing, the three H's, humanity, healing and hope. Now, there's a new poll out today, uh, Resolve poll in the nine newspapers. I want to ask you a couple of questions from it. Firstly, uh, overall, 64% of people surveyed said they would vote yes in such a referendum. Uh, are, are you heartened by that? Oh, look, absolutely. Look, Australians are, are, are genuinely uh, a nation of, of fair people. You know, it, it's, it's that, that old notion of a, of a fair go. And I think, uh, genuinely, uh, Aust Australians want to see our people do well in this country. They know that it's time. This is unfinished business. And now this is their opportunity, through the leadership of Anthony Albanese as the Prime Minister. He said we're going to a referendum. Uh, and let the people have their say. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and I'm very heartened by the, uh, by the support. OK, that's the overall figure, but drilling down into the survey, it shows a lot of Australians are still hazy about the details, concerned about what a referendum, what, what a voice actually means. So, therefore, how important, in your view, is it that uh, groups like yours and certainly the Prime Minister and those in the government uh, really step up soon and explain what this is all about? Well, Michael, you know, I've, I've seen people do a... Uh, you know, our people do an acknowledgement of country. They do a welcome to country. However, when our elders speak, uh, people want to uh, drill down into detail and question the, the knowledge and the wisdom of our old people. Now, when we went out and done the Uluru Dialogues, we had, we had a cross-section of the community and the majority of people that were, that were in them dialogues that said they wanted a, a voice enshrined in the Constitution through a referendum were elders. Now, not to, to listen, not to listen to our elders, I think, is very disrespectful. However, I don't want to take the conversation there. I want to stay positive, Michael. And in terms of your detail, the only detail that I'm really concerned about is what the future is going to look like for my kids and your kids. The federal opposition uh, uh, isn't saying yet whether it will come out and endorse a yes vote. So what, uh, I guess, message, what advice would you have for the opposition leader, Peter Dutton, on this issue? Look, it's pretty simple. This is not about politics, it's about the people. You know, this is about future generations. We have a responsibility. Now, you can be on the wrong side of uh, history or you can be on the right side of history. You know, that, that's not for me to determine in terms of the opposition and what they do. However, what I do know is that the current government said he wants to take this country to a referendum and let the people have a say. We live in a democracy. You know, let, let the people have their say. 
And speaking of people having a say, when would you like the government to move on a referendum? Uh, it'll be sometime next year. Would you like it to be sooner rather than later in 2023? Uh yeah, absolutely. My, my personal preference is mm. uh, earl, early as possible. However, uh, we've got people like Megan, Megan Davis and, and Pat Anderson that are in the background working on, uh, on dates, time frames, and they'll continue to do that. You know, Linda, uh, the Minister, has set up uh, uh, some advisory uh, committees or councils, and they'll work for all that. However, uh, again, Michael, uh, it, it, it's a time for change. Uh, and this is an opportunity to, to uh, uh, tran uh, you know, uh, uh, a transformation for the nation. And uh, let, let's start the process. Roy RC, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. It's a pleasure to be on your program.